Hello dear fans, uh, friends and uh, subscribers. Uh, this is your host Ram coming back to you. Uh, as you know, uh, I know it has been absolutely crazy. You saw that I was, uh, my sound was not clear. A lot of problems. As I said, I was on vacation. But now I am back into my Toronto studios here after having a nice vacation there in uh, uh, very, very wonderful my hometown, Mumbai. I had a nice time. And still I uh, decided to keep in touch with you, dear friends, subscribers. I was happy to see the response too. Uh, but unfortunately I know it was not very professional. I was irregular. There were a lot of things. But now again, uh, this show will become very regular now. So that's the good news. So after back from vacation, well, a change of weather. It's uh, really, really affected my health. Uh, and uh, I am under the weather. But, uh, but as you know, uh, I have to connect to you as I'm back from vacation and uh, well so let's get connected once again uh, in a professional level um, uh, so please um, I know that it was very unprofessional for the last one month but now I'm once again back into my professional attire and speaking to you dear fans and subscribers hope you're all doing well and well as far as uh, today's cricket happening show is concerned yes uh, it would have been my pleasure to actually cover the day and night test match which ended in just three days but what an experiment it was by the ICC I mean we saw some encouraging response coming in Australia winning the series 2-0 match wrapped up in three days the ball really doing the talking instead of the bat which is good to see and also uh, one thing is that uh, Brendan McCallum the New Zealand captain definitely saw, said that day and night test cricket has arrived and there were some real huge crowds there Adelaide Oval and uh, unfortunately I couldn't really bring in the reports since I was traveling at that time. I'm uh, sorry about it but well let me also tell you that that experiment from ICC was a master stroke according to me because the ping ball we had some doubts whether it will uh, hold its own. Well it definitely stood the test very well. There was no problem and everything went on well and day night test cricket uh, could be the order of the day as far as test cricket is concerned in the future according to me because uh, the players have liked it and everybody were happy uh, with the positive response coming in from all the cricket players. Well, uh, I will come back to that later but uh, right now I'm going to talk about a game where England have wrapped up their, um, their tour of um, uh, United Arab Emirates by dumping Pakistan in the T20 series 3-0 but not before, as you know, these England-Pakistan clashes uh, have been very, very exciting affairs. It has been exciting T20 series and what a way for England. Especially considering that the, uh, in March-April 2016, we are going to have the T20 World Cup in India. And here comes England uh, on the wake of that, coming in and demolishing Pakistan. Not demolishing, but basically um, uh, drubbing Pakistan 3-0 in the T20 series. Not only that, but what I, as I said, all the matches that has been played by England and Pakistan. And today also, let me tell you, uh, even though this match was a dead rubber for a Pakistan, because England had already won the series, but England went full tilt at it. And what an exciting match. Uh, both the teams were struggling, but they recovered to post 100. And England posted 154 for 8, Pakistan posting 154 for 7. So you know what I'm talking about. It was a real tie there in the 20 overs. Uh, but after that, the super over eliminator, there was one hero and what a no very bold. In fact, Pakistan had Afridi and Akmal coming in to bat. And Chris Jordan, if you look at his um, uh, bowling uh, figures in the, uh, in, the, in the Pakistan innings, uh, he bowled four overs for 39. He was the most costliest bowler and one was really wondering whether it was the right move uh, by the T20 captain. Uh, to actually uh, you know, toss the ball to Chris Jordan. And Chris Jordan, let me tell you, oh my word, that was tremendous balling to Shahid Afridi and Umar Akmal to keep them to just three runs in the super over eliminator and also um, um, bowl uh, Umar Akmal around his legs and what an over it was. Six well-directed Yorkers and that is not easy to bowl. So this is precision from Chris Jordan and that was simply superb. I've never seen anyone do bowl six Yorkers in a T20 match in six balls. And that was a stupendous, stupendous uh, bowling performance, I thought. Even though 
we just saw one of Chris Jordan he restricted them to three runs and uh, England uh, kept keeping their cool with Morgan and Butler playing against a freely um, making four runs and uh, they, uh, they won the Super Bowl eliminator thus winning the T20 series uh, 3-0 uh, and uh, it was a uh, tremendous performance, I thought. I mean, um, Chris Jordan, what to say? I um, mean, he really, really showed uh, that he is the one. He, in fact, um, I was told that he actually took the ball from Morgan and said that he will do the duty for, uh, for um, you know, I'm sure uh, if England would have been 2-0 down today or probably it would have been 2-1-1 uh, one, one or something, I'm sure Jordan would have not been given the ball. But probably since England had dropped up the series, uh, I thought um, it was uh, very kind of the England captain to hand over the ball uh, to uh, to this gentleman, uh, Chris Jordan. What a job he did. And that was simply, what to say, I mean, simply superb stuff coming in from Chris Jordan uh, and uh, clinching the series. In fact, um, taking the series 3-0. Well, uh, so first and foremost, uh, let me talk about what happened. It was England who actually batted first and England... Uh, had a very, very horrid start to proceedings as Amar Yamin, uh, a seamer, uh, was given the ball. He was making his T20 debut and the first delivery he bowled, he claimed a wicket and he became the 11th player to do so in T20 international cricket as he actually had Amar Yamin LBW for a knot. So that was the first wicket to go and after that, uh, jo Joe Root came in and Joe Root, one has never seen Joe Root get into... Uh, in such a mode, I mean, we know that he is a, one who is a very compact player, but we know that T20 demands a lot of strokes. But Joe Root, let me tell you, this was another uh, good batting from Joe Root. I mean, he started uh, uh, winding up, uh, unwinding with lots of boundaries. And then look at this guy, Joe Root. Uh, I mean, he's, he's so short. Mama, their farm was balling. He heaved him uh, into the stands for a sex. And what a knock from Joe Root. I mean, the, the cameo, real cameo, 32 of just 22 balls with four fours and one six. And then Shai Afridi picked up both the wickets, uh, two wickets of two consecutive balls, as he first picked up Joe Root uh, by bowling him for 32 of 22 balls with four fours and one six. And Moin Ali was out the very first ball he received from Shai Afridi, as it was a cotton ball for Shai Afridi for not. Uh, made it 48 for three. Uh, Morgan uh, making 15 of 14 deliveries with 1-4 uh, and then Butler uh, was run out by Mohamed Rizwan very wonderfully well by 2 but one man was standing there, uh, Sam Billings uh, was the next to go he was uh, out trying to um, uh, you know, attempt a, um, a high stroke Kordo Marakmal bowled Anwar Ali for 7, fade balls 1-4 and suddenly uh, even um, the, I mean, England innings uh, were really uh, dwindling, I would say, 86 for uh, 6 and 13th over. But one man who was standing there was James Wins. Now, James Wins was not really, really attacking. He knew that uh, he, his wicket was very important. He had to stay at the crease. And James Wins, let me play to you, played a compact little innings, uh, a very controlled innings by James Wins of 46 of 45 balls, 3 fours and 1 6. And uh, he got some. A good company from Wokes. As Chris Wokes entered, the score was 86 for sex. And Chris Wokes uh, really, really uh, started um, getting after the Pakistani bowling by cracking three sixes. He hit the Imam Adir Fan for a sex. And he cracked three sixes in all with one, one four in a very, very hard hitting knock of 37 of 24 balls uh, to really take this England innings to 154 for eight. And James Swens is at 46 of 45 balls, 3 fours and 1 6. Willie was not out of 3. And looking at the balling, so 154 for 8 of 20 overs was what uh, England raised on the board. Uh, and looking at the balling, uh, uh, looking at the balling here, uh, well, I seem to have uh, hit a glitch here. I'm just trying to see. Uh, well, as far as uh, the uh, balling was concerned, um, uh, it was uh, Amar Yamin, as I said, on his uh, debut. Uh, 2 overs, 1 for 12. Soil Tanveer was costly, 4 overs, 36 runs and 2 wickets. Mohamed Irfan uh, today couldn't make any impression. He got clattered by both Joe Root and Chris Wokes. Uh, 4 overs cost him 40 runs, was the costliest. Shai Afridi uh, did a, a good turn for himself. 4 overs, one, 2 for 19. Anwar 8, 1 for 35, 4. And Shai Malik, 2 overs, no maiden, 1 for 8. 
as far as Pakistan were concerned, their start was horrendous, one could say, uh, because wicket started going pretty. First it was David Billy uh, in his uh, first over uh, dismissing Ahmed Shahzad, getting him clean bowl for four. Uh, then the 39-year-old Rafatullah trying to walk across his stumps to heave Billy uh, was LBW ball, Willie for naught. And then Mohamed Afiz was run out brilliantly by a Vince Morgan combination for one, which left Pakistan teetering at the brink at 11 for 3 and that made Shoaib Malik and Mohamed Rizwan the crease. Shoaib Malik uh, played some very good strokes uh, to pull the initiative back from 11 for 3. Uh, the recovery, uh, not the recovery, it was uh, sort of a, a real um, uh, uh, sort of uh, just pushing along the runs and trying to make sure that they don't lose their wickets. So the score reached on to uh, 50 uh, with some good boundaries coming in from Shoaib Malik. Mohamed Rizwan also uh, combined well with him and this partnership had raised the score to 50 and that was the time Chris Woke struck and sorry Mohamed Rizwan was uh, caught and bowled by Rashid for 24 or 23 balls with four fours uh, and then uh, Umar Akmal was caught by Jordan of the ball in Hali for four and that left 65 for six at that stage uh, and that once again 65 for five was the score at that stage and uh, Pakistan innings uh, was not having any uh, sort of balance at the time, but the captain Shai the Freedy entered the scene uh, and he played only the way that he knows, and that was to hit sixes as he hit three sixes in his knock of 29 of 20 balls. And this was the partnership which really put some real momentum into this uh, game here for Pakistan to actually uh, try to go and reach the target. Because this partnership, uh, when Umar Akmal uh, was out, uh, it was 65 for six. So basically, if you look at it, uh, it was almost a 63 run. It was a breezy partnership of 63 runs in six overs, so 10 runs per over. And uh, Shoaib Malik was uh, banging force uh, very well. He was uh, sighting the ball very well at that stage. Shai the Freedy was doing his pyro techniques, but then Willie actually castled um, Shai the Freedy for 29 or 20 balls. But hope was there with Shoaib Malik looking pretty sharp there. Uh, but uh, Shoaib Malik was doing all that was needed and when finally when Shoaib Malik was there along with uh, Sohail Tanvir at the crease, uh, in fact Shoaib Malik uh, had, um, there were only, uh, I thought it was only, they needed only two runs uh, of the last over of the game uh, and Shoaib Malik was there, so Shoaib Malik tried, trying to actually loft walks to lo uh, lofted walks and uh, when two runs were required, Shoaib Malik was a victim uh, caught by Billings and that really said that England can really do something here and uh, in the final delivery when two runs were required with Sohil Tanvir and Anwar Ali, all they could do is to go and actually scramble a bye which left the Pakistan innings on level with England at 154 for 7 uh, and that, that actually brought in the super over eliminator which I talked about where Chris Jordan bowled 6 Yorkers with pinpoint precision to really leave Shahid Afridi, the big hitter, and Umar Akmal all at sea. And finally, it was a victory for England and a T20 series with the 3 0. Uh, bowling David Billy, four overs, no maiden, uh, three for 36, bowled superbly. Vokes uh, was brilliant with his all round performance, four overs, one for 26. Jordan, what I mean, if you look at his uh, bowling figures uh, in the uh, in the full innings of Pakistan, he was the most costly baller. 4 0 1 for thir none for 39. Adil Rashid, 4 0 1 for 29. Mohin Ali, 4 0 1 for 22, bowled well. And it was all over as England winning the Super Over Eliminator uh, in, in, a, in, a, in tremendous style, uh, thanks to Chris Jordan bowling six Yorkers in a single over. is always, always difficult to do. And what an effort from Chris Jordan. For me, I would have probably given the player of the match to Chris Jordan because uh, bowling six Yorkers in six balls is something truly stupendous. But the player of the match went to Shah Malik, not taking any credit away, he played a breezy innings and he was the one who kept the hope going for Pakistan and finally it ended in a tie. Player of the series, James Wins of England, looks a very, very promising player and he was named uh, player of the match. So that actually sums up this uh, particular and what a series we had between England and Pakistan. Uh, they, uh, uh, not at, um, both the teams not giving an inch, fighting it to the last. And as I said, this has been a very, very exciting series. 
uh, but England would be happy that not, not only did they win the one day international series, they've also won the T20 series in a very, very convincing fashion, 3-0, and what more can one expect from England? England would be very happy considering that T20 World Cup uh, is coming up. So congratulations to England on a, on a, on a superb uh, performance here in the final one day international to win the series 3-0. Well, from here, uh, a brief as I said, I'm just going to look at the day-night test match which happened. I couldn't really talk about it. Australia making 202 in the first innings uh, and, uh, sorry, New Zealand making 202 all out. Uh, and then Australia replying with 224 with uh, Peter Neville making 66 with 8 fours and uh, Stephen Smith 53, 5 fours. Uh, and uh, Trent Bolt, uh, sorry, it was Doug Bracewell with the pink ball picking up uh, three wickets for 18. It was uh, a shared performance by the Kiwi ballers. Uh, but New Zealand in the second deck, in fact, the, 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 the lead was not a big one. It was just a slender lead, just a 22-run lead. And New Zealand in their second innings uh, were all of 208 with a career best performances coming, performance coming in from Josh Hazelwood uh, as he picked up six wickets for 70 runs. Uh, and uh, as far as the batting was concerned for New Zealand, well, the highest scorer was uh, um, um, Mark Santner, uh, putting up a very impressive performance of 45 with 5 fours and 1 6, 32 from Ross Taylor. Uh, and uh, Australia uh, were actually chasing the target of 187. And uh, let me tell you, the match got over on the third day itself uh, with um, uh, Australia. Uh, really, uh, as I said, the ball was the something... Uh, which really did the talking in this particular uh, pink ball, the experimentation of the pink ball test match here. Uh, but um, other than that, uh, one thought that uh, um, it was a very, very good match in Australia. Uh, not having it easy either, uh, even though chasing 180-odd runs, they really had to struggle uh, because the New Zealand bowlers stuck to a good bowling. In fact, Trent Bolt uh, uh, picked up five, five for there, five for 60 for Trent Bolt. So it's good to see Warner making 35 and then finally uh, there was some drama, a bit of drama, but uh, with uh, Sean Marsh making 49 with 6 fours, 28 from Mitchell Marsh and then finally it was Peter Siddle and Mitchell Stark taking them over the line and the, thus the uh, experimentation, the first historic day-night test match between New Zealand and Australia ended, uh, which will really go down in history as uh, a match which ended in just three days. Uh, and Australia won the three-match series in a very convincing fashion, 2-0. Player of the match went to George Hazard with his career best bowling figures of six wickets. As you know, George Hazard is a baller who likes to hit the deck. And he really hit the deck very well the other day uh, to pick up six wickets. And David Warner, for his consistency in this particular series, was named player of the series. Well, dear fans and subscribers, uh, that only leaves me a little time here to dwell on anything. Uh, I'm almost coming to an end of this cricket show. Um, as I said, I'm back from vacation, so now you will be seeing me in my professional attire every day. Uh, thanks for your cooperation, uh, your communication, and also your thorough understanding when I was on vacation. And I'm back here to entertain you all on this cricket happening. So, till such time, I come back to entertain you tomorrow. Uh, it's goodbye from Host Ram Studios. Thank you.